All right, welcome everybody to the August 18th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call. Uh, we do have a number of people joining today who have not previously joined us. So I'm going to make sure we cover the antitrust policy notice um, in a bit more de detail. So just uh, FYI, this meeting is covered by the, the Next Foundation's antitrust policy notice here. Uh, if you have any sort of questions or concerns, um, please contact Hyperledger staff, your legal con uh, counsel, or even Andrew Updegrove of the firm Gesmer Updegrove uh, with any questions that you might have. The second thing that we have to abide by on this call is the uh, code of conduct, which is linked our, in our agenda. Uh, everybody is welcome to participate here, um, but make sure that you are respectful to the other uh, people who are on the call. So with that, we'll go through the announcements. Uh, the first announcement here is a standard announcement. There is a Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday to hundreds of Hyperledger developers. If you have something that you would like to reach those developers, uh, please leave a link in the comment. Uh, or leave a comment in the link that is uh, linked in our agenda here. Uh, so there's a wiki page that you can provide your comments. Um, the second announcement I have is that I would like to cancel the September 15th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call um, because I personally will be on a plane back from the Hyperledger Global Forum. Um, and I'm imagining that there will be a number of other people in some sort of travel state as well. So. I just wanted to make that announcement before we actually canceled it from the calendar. Does anybody have any objections to doing so? No objection. All right, thanks, Dano. Um, all right, and then the last thing here, uh, I don't know, Emily, do you want to cover this? Absolutely. Good morning, all. Um, I'm Emily. I'm from the PR team, and I just put a, a note in here. I think Rise put this out on Discord as well, but um, as Global Forum is just around the corner, we are looking to highlight project news. Um, I know of a couple things that I think are out there, but it would be great to have as much, uh, and, and it doesn't have to be breaking news. It would be great if it was breaking news, but anything recent and noteworthy in terms of project releases, standards, uh, labs, new projects, anything along those lines that you want highlighted. I just need to know about it by Monday, August 29th, so we can um, plan it into the news cycle and as appropriate, uh, plan some blog content as well to support it. So quick call for that. If you have something, um, please email the PR at hyperledger.org email address. Um, that would be great. I, I'm also on Discord some, but the PR, uh, truthfully, the PR address is a more reliable way to reach me. All right, thank you, Emily. Uh, any other announcements that anybody would like to make at this time? All right, uh, so with that, um, I did leave the Aries and the Indy reports on the uh, agenda. They were, uh, came in, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, maybe. Um, but there were still a number of people who hadn't reviewed them. I didn't see any comments coming through on those, uh, so I will end up removing them from uh, the agenda for next week. But is there any questions or comments that anybody has on either the ARIES or the Indy report that we should cover? Okay, so no hands, uh, nobody coming off mute. I'll take that as a no. Uh, we also have the Aroha report, uh, which came, it was supposed to be due last Thursday. Uh, so we will uh, reach out to the Aroha team and see if we can get them to submit their quarterly report. I think we actually have a number of people on the call uh, <laughs> today, so. We have completed the report. Um, it is due for a final proof review, uh, proof review, uh, uh, proofread will be submitted today, tomorrow, the latest. All right, thanks. Um, okay, so that's the announcements and the quarterly reports. 
Uh, we do have the bevel report I see has been being worked on. Uh, we kind of got at it and then removed from that. Uh, so I expect that to, to be coming in here shortly. Uh, the grid and the transact reports are due next week. So we will look to see those as well. So with that, I think we are on to the um, meat of the agenda. I don't know who's sharing, but if you wouldn't mind scrolling down. All right. Um, so we have two items of discussion today. The first one is the Soling project proposal um, that has been provided. The second one is um, been added here by uh, Rai on behalf of the Aroha team uh, to talk about the Ursa library uh, and the way in which we get that updated. So um, I think I'm going to actually start with the second item. I was told it won't take uh, a whole lot of time to cover this, but I, I think it is um, probably the, the place where we should start. And then we will jump to the, the Soling project proposal and have a discussion on that. Uh, so I don't know, Alexander, are you going to be talking about this or do we have somebody else who's going to be talking about this? Um, it's fine. I'll cover this. All right. So um, just as a brief reminder, um, Hyperledger Ursa is the unified cryptographic library written in Rust, um, but it also provides a C ABI compatible library version. And it is currently in a state which is causing problems for Iroha. Um, basically, the first problem that we have encountered was that we had to hold back a few major cryptographic dependencies um, due to um, Hyperledger Ursa using older, unupdated versions of those libraries. We dug a little deeper. Um, we identified a couple of um, CVEs. We have contacted the Ursa developers and are waiting for a response for the past three months. Unfortunately, nothing happened. And we contacted Rai, who generously offered us help. The way we would like it to be resolved is, of course, for um, Ursa maintainers to return and to help us with updating their library. But as far as I know, this is not possible. So an alternative was proposed, um, making a few of us, um, a few of the maintainers of Iroha, co-maintain Hyperledger Ursa. Uh, unfortunately for that, we would need a little bit more resources. Right now we're stretched a little thin. Um, we already have an at capacity team of 12 people. We can't spare more developer time and we can't spare more than a few people's part-time attention to maintaining Ursa. Um, we would, however, be able to change or revise this, um, provided that we had a little bit more resources so that we could hire at least someone to replace um, the lost time on Ioha, or ideally um, someone with um, security proficiencies so that they could also co-review our contributions to Orsa. We're also planning if, of course, the second option is inevitable, to make some small alterations um, so that OSA is easier to maintain in the future. Um, in particular, we're moving away from a few deprecated libraries and relying more on Rust core rather than um, external dependencies, just like with Iroha. We would like to also offer our experience with testing, buzzing, and code quality so that we can help Ursa remain both reliable and easy to use. And I guess that's it from my side. Jim? Uh, yeah. Um, hey, um, Alex, Ag Alexandra? Yes. yes. Yeah, first, first question from me is, uh, besides Iroha, uh, do you know other um, either high pleasure projects or uh, customer projects that are dependent on Ursa? Um, I'm guessing that Rai Jones would be more qualified to answer this question. I am unfortunately focused on your hard development. Yeah, I, I'm just curious if um, uh, 
finding the other dependent projects and work out um, the resource issue might be a uh, worthwhile effort at this point. Uh, I can't imagine Hiroha being the only project um, using Ursa. I don't know off the top of my head, and unfortunately, Hart is not on this call. Um, I I have to defer. Uh, I, I know that uh, I think uh, Grid was looking at it for a while. I I, I don't know though. Okay. Uh, I guess the other uh, question. Hold, hold, on, hold on, Jim. I think I, I think Sorry. Nathan might have an answer to some of that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Obviously, the Aries projects are making use of Ursa. Um. Indy uses it to a certain extent. Um, we know that Aroha has been using it, but I don't know of any other projects that are using it in production. There are, have been some projects to do verifiable credentials. Um, from Fabric and some of the other blockchains at Hyperledger that have have made use of Ursa, but I don't think any of them were released into a production environment. Um, there's more to say about some of the security uh, stuff as well if we want to dive down that track, but uh, I think that the focus here is on what Aroha wants to do next so far. Okay, yeah, it seems like uh, the, if, if, if um, Indy slash Aries are using uh, uh, Ursa to the same extent that uh, Iroha is, uh, the same problem would be present there as well. So um, maybe the teams can work together. Um, the, the, the next related question I had is so for the Iroha team, if it's not Ursa, Ursa do you have a alternative? Um, from open source point of view, if you need something changed uh, in the dependency and no one is doing that, usually it's the it's the dependent team that has to to contribute resources. That's certainly been our experience. Uh, there's just no way, no other way to make it work, right? Um, well, um, certainly yes. Um, however, we are far from the only users, as far as I can tell. And it would not make sense for us to unilaterally contribute to um, significant architectural changes in Ursa. Um, unfortunately, one of the deprecated libraries is failure. Um, and that library um, is an error handling library that requires a significant restructuring of the code. It will produce a semantically incompatible, a semver incompatible version of Ursa. And we don't want to do that unilaterally. We want to at least know if there are other people involved, know if there are other people interested in maintaining it. And if so, I would like to be aware of their requirements and their necessities. All right, Makoto. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask, like, is there a way that we can, or maybe the, through the TSC or Hyperledger Foundation, like if there's a way to put out like some kind of like call for, I don't know, call for participation in, in the Ursa project, like we could help to coordinate, um, you know, this maintenance if there were a few interested developers from other Hyperledger members, for instance. Yeah, I think that's an interesting suggestion, Makoto. Uh, Nathan? Uh, I think one of the first steps here is to show up on the Ursa call. Um, there has been a resurgence of interest um, from DSR and the Avast folks and a few others uh, in uh, doing some of this maintenance work. Um, but apparently we haven't heard from the Aroha folks on that call. I'm reaching out to Cam over, over chat right now and talking to him about what he's heard about this issue and what he hasn't heard about this issue. It, it looks like we have some disconnect between the things that are going on this on the security list and the maintainers in Ursa. So not everybody in the Ursa project is aware of the issues that Aroha is facing. Um, so that would probably be the first step is to try to make sure everybody on the project knows what's going on. Um, and it could just be there's a, a communication gap. I know Cam in particular and the folks at Kiva, we have been less connected to this than we were in the past as Kiva pulled back some of its project work on Hyperledger Aries. So um, some of this, I think, is just kind of a, a, a transition gap that we're seeing on Ursa and less an indicator of, of overall project health. But the fact that we went from the third to the 12th with for a response and that I'm asking core maintainers on Ursa and they still haven't heard about the issue is is indicative of some communications problems. 
Thanks for that, Nathan. I think that's a that's probably a good step to take as far as next steps. Um, it also brings to mind some of the work that's being done by the security task force uh, for making sure that we have the right security contacts in the list uh, to ensure that you know people who need to be aware of security issues coming in are aware of those issues. So that's that's probably something else we can follow up on as a next step as well is to make sure that we have communication with the URSA maintainers and, and make sure that we know who the right security contacts are uh, from that, that group of people um, to ensure that when they're made aware of these issues, when they, they come up and can start to address them or at least have conversations um, in, in this regard. So um, yeah, I think two next steps that I, I heard coming out of this discussion, one is uh, for the AROHA team to join the URSA community calls um, and have discussions with them. And then secondly, for uh, us to make sure that we have the right contacts in the, the security uh, list to ensure that uh, URSA is represented as they need to be. Any other uh, discussion that we should have on this particular topic? I think we can. All right. Well, thank you uh, for bringing this to our attention and hopefully this uh, through having conversations directly with the URSA maintainers and their community calls will help uh, to at least get some movement on, on the challenges here that you have. All right, uh, so then the next topic here on our agenda is the Solane project proposal. Uh, we do have Sean here to talk to us about this proposal. I have seen a few comments here in the, the GitHub uh, pull request, but Sean, did you wanna uh, talk us through kind of the proposal and uh, let us know kind of where Solang's at at the moment? Um, hello. Um, okay, so uh, I suppose I'm aware the, the comments on the uh, pull request being addressed. Um, so mm -hmm. um, I could give like a, a brief little uh, background on, on Solang. So uh, originally I was working on Burrow and we were using the Ethereum Solidity compiler to use things to, to, um, to compile Solidity. And we wanted to do things that the compiler couldn't do. Uh, we, we opened some issues on the on the um, SOLC compiler um, GitHub repo, had some discussions and they showed really no interest. And then I started to realize that in the wider blockchain, um, there would be interest in a compiler which would support Solidity for for other targets of EVM um, and other targets on Ethereum. Um, so we so, um, started building compiler from scratch. The idea was to use LLVM so that all the tricky parts for code generation would be, we didn't have to deal with that. That could be done by, by LLVM. Um, we only need to work on the front end of the compiler. So we it, just a, the parsing, semantic analysis, and the, the LLVM intermediate uh, representation generation. Um, so right now um, we we support nearly all the same syntax as as um, Ethereum Solidity, so zero point eight. There are a few minor exceptions, and no one's raised any issues about that yet, and we will resolve those minor issues uh, as well. So while the project project is growing, um, I have spoken to various high pleasure um, other high pleasure projects. So I spoke to Mick Bowman about adding support for Solidity for the private data objects. Uh, project. Um, we started some initial code um, that didn't really, unfortunately, code didn't really develop from there, but um, there's definitely a lot of interest. Also, had some brief discussions with uh, Michael about, about supporting Fabric by the Fabric Contracts API. That seemed like a, um, a good idea, um, but no work was started for that, but also a definite interest. Uh, we wrote a, a, a prototype for Sawtooth. And uh, but lots of discussions and calls with uh, Sean Amundsen about how to further progress that. Um, again, there's a problem of sort of putting bodies on the project, but um, definitely interest um, from that project as well. Um, so, Solang is um, it isn't just a generic compiler project. It it, it also provides uh, building blocks for tooling. So that, that 
there's a Solidity code formatter which is being written based on Serlang's parser, uh, uses the Serlang parser create. Um, we've we've written a um, uh, using the Hyperledger mentorship um, two years back a, a language server for Solidity. So this is something you can use in VS Code, for example. So it gives you uh, syntax highlighting and errors and hovers and that sort of thing. It can also be used in Atom and in NeoVM. Um, and uh, the other interesting thing is that um, existing static analysis tools often work in LLVM IR. And Saucy doesn't produce LLVM IR, so those tools won't work with that. So um, I've been talking to uh, uh, Jeff Wang, a professor from, a, from Texas a and University, um, about using, doing static analysis on Solidity using Solang. Uh, that's the, the Green Core project. Uh, so that, that's also an interesting angle. Um, I guess lastly, the point I would like to say is that um, compiling smart contracts is kind of different than a traditional compiler, So, this, which makes this project interesting, I feel. So normally with a compiler, you would balance the uh, execution time of the compiler with how optimized your compiler output is. But um, with smart contracts, the, the, the balance is, is different. The, the contract is quite small. So you're dealing with um, just a, a small amount of code and the um, the need for optimization is much higher. On chains like Ethereum, the gas cost is, is such that if you can optimize the output more, uh, there are genuine cost savings, uh, um, especially over many runs, because can be very significant. So, um, so there are compiler techniques like super optimization, uh, concordic, execution, which is uh, concrete and symbolic execution, um, that's methods that so methods that can be used to to optimize smart contracts. Uh, this is a very interesting field. And um, yeah, so Solang, for example, has a, a pass which replaces 256-bit multipliers with 64-bit multipliers. And it uses uh, cloning uh, execution. Um, in order to implement that. And that's something you wouldn't do in a traditional compiler because if you would do that on a large program, the execution time of the compiler would just be far too great. Um, so we, um, yeah, so we're, um, the Slana and Subset commu uh, communities are are, um, are, are very interested. Um, the the targets are, are very much maturing and there's this definite activity around that. Um, and lastly, we would like to work on an EVM backend. And we've, you only just have discussions about changing changing the e WASM target to EVM, which would be another very interesting thing to, to work on. Um, I guess that's it. All right, thanks, John. Um, so as everybody probably remembers or might remember, um, this is the second time that Solang has come to the TSC to uh, propose this project. Uh, into incubation. Uh, the last time we chatted, I think the, the main concern was really around um, the maintainership. I think it was Sean at that point, right? Um, and since then, uh, there have been a couple of new additions to the maintainership of the project. And so I guess at this point, open for any sort of questions that people might have for Sean. Uh, on Solang or any sort of discussion items that we should talk through. I know we've had a couple of conversations um, prior to this in our TSE calls uh, last week in the project gap. So um, anything else that we should bring up at this point? I should Please? mention that. Oh, yeah, go ahead, John. Oh, sorry, go I just want to mention. I just wanted to mention that um, the other maintainers, uh, Lucas and Cyril, they're also on the call, uh, available for, uh, for for questions. Great, thanks, John. Are we? Hey, thanks, John, for the presentation. So, um, sorry, a quick question. Maybe it's a it's it's a question that's bugging me for a while now. So, which products are like competing with? let's say so long for instance so um, can you share some information some thoughts on that? so there's um 
so for the Solidity language, there's um, there's the Ethereum Solidity compiler, Sol C, and that only targets Ethereum. So that that's a, obviously a competitor um, for that. There's also a project called um, Sol, but that um, that is a Solidity compiler, but it it doesn't uh, development has ceased. It can and can only target Ewasm, and um, Ewasm probably isn't um, developing either. Um, so. Um, as far as compilers, the, the only um, competitor we have is, is the Ethereum compiler, but that only targets Ethereum. Is that that, does that answer your question? Um, sorry, yeah, I have, I, I think my question extends to that, right? So the reason I was asking for that is, so when we say, um, so that people don't need to familiarize themselves with other programming languages, that if they are Solidity developers, that this particular project can cross compile it for them across other blockchains, other non-Ethereum blockchains. So are we talking about Ethereum compatible um, blockchains itself or like non-Ethereum, since specifically you mentioned it as non-Ethereum compatible, just, just for a time, let's say namesake, because Fabric is the other most popular one apart from Besu. Um, let's say people come here and they say, okay, there is a Solang project. Can I write my solidity and can compile it into a chain code, for instance? That's kind of question that people can come up with, right? So um, just to have that understanding. So what exactly is happening inside Solang or is there any competitor projects that does uh, something like what here it's happening? So Solang can compile um... So there's um, there's a generic part um, in Solang which compiles um, uh, Solidity, but there's a target specific part. So at the moment we can we can target Solana substrate and um, Ewasm, and um, we certainly have a lot of, we have a lot of interest in developing this for Fabric as well. At the moment it's it's not possible yet. Um, so when when is, when in, when the solidity state is accessed, for example, some some uh, you have to hook up the the, the blockchain specific parts. Um, uh, but the the aim is very much for Solang to um, target many different blockchains. Understood. So the so the way we should understand currently the Solang is it is compiling. I mean, sure, it is cross compiling or solidity into multiple. Um, like the outcome binaries. However, all those binaries are currently compatible with the ones that support, uh, let's say, EVM itself, right? So, um, no, 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 this is not true. No, um, um, so, like, so Solana, um, Polkadot, and, and Ewasm are not EVM, um, but those are not EVM virtual machines. These are completely different virtual machines. So, um, Polkadot. Is a WebAssembly kind of virtual machine, non EVM. Um, Ewasm is also WebAssembly, and Solana uses um, a, a different uh, virtual machine based on the Linux kernel BPF. So um, it, it's it's um, this project makes Solidity available to non EVM chains. I sorry, I should have a uh, question that has uh, some blockchain that supports. Ethereum smart contracts, not necessarily via EVM. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so this project um, is so that the blockchain itself doesn't make any changes to. There's no changes made to the blockchain itself. Um, the compiler just um, has a target which which implements all the blockchain specific parts for that for each blockchain. Mm -hmm. Jim. Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, two questions. The first one was kind of answered already, so just want to confirm my understanding. Uh, I thought Solang was mainly targeting um, WebAssembly-based um, uh, runtime engines, but based on what um, Sean just said, that's not the case. Um, uh, uh, Substray and Uasm is WebAssembly-based, but Solana is not. Is that understanding correct? Yes, that's correct. And this is the... Um... This is the, the great thing about using LLVM. Um, right, okay. Yeah, because uh, yeah. that's clear. Uh, my second question is, can you talk a, bit, a little bit about the level of, of effort 
uh, now and uh, expect that in the future to add a new um, um, execution engine support, say um, how much of the code has to be written to support um, I don't I don't know if fabric is a good example. Um, I don't know, uh, let's say to support um, Cosmos, for example. To okay, me, so I, it kind of it's a bit pointless to to say uh, learn Solidity and then compile to a full language that fabric supports. I, I think I would just go to the full language directly. So I wouldn't use Fabric as a good example for future expansions, but maybe Cosmos. What would be the, the level of effort to add that support? So um, um, well, I'm glad you asked about Cosmos because um, Cosmosm is, is something I, I looked at in the past and um, to evaluate how much work it would be. So um, uh, Cosmos, that's it's a WASM, uh, WebAssembly based virtual machine. So um, generating WebAssembly is not a problem. The problem um, of the effort will be required in hooking up all the, the blockchain specific parts. So in Solidity, you can you can do things like ask the current block height or um, save something on, on chain or retrieve something from chain or get, get the, the time, um, lots of sorts of things. Um, so all those specific blockchain specific things need to be hooked up. And in, in Cosm, uh, Cosmos, um, that's done over protobuf. So um, the effort that's required would be to, for all those things, is to um, translate a, a request or compile a request in Solidity into a, um, a protobuf um, request, and which then goes through, goes to a WebAssembly host function at runtime, and then the, the, the answer sent back, and then we have to um, deprotobuf the, the, the result. So for um, um, yes, yeah, for each one of those functions, um, we need we need to create a, a protobuf request and pass the result. Um, and then the next part is um, well, a lot of testing, um, writing integration tests for, for the chain. Um, and, and, um, so, oh, I, I guess another thing is um, when when you call a solidity contract. You, you call a, a function and a, func and a function arguments. In, that's also done via protobuf on uh, Cosm, Cosmos. So um, the function arguments and return values will have to be deserialized and serialized using uh, uh, protobuf. Um, th that's the essentially the, um, the, the work required um, to get Solidity working. Th there might be some functions in in Cosmos, which are very useful to have access to in Solidity. So it might be needed to add a few functions, um, built-in functions in, in Solang for, for, for Cosmos. We've done this for, for um, Solana, and we've done this for Substrate. You can do an import from quote, quote, uh, single quotes, um, Solana in, in Solidity, and then you can, you can import specific built-in Solana functions and call them. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, that helps a lot. I'm trying to figure out if someone were to add uh, support to a new um, uh, smart contract engine, would that person, uh, what's the most important skill? Uh, would it be understanding compiler architectures or I just need to know how the uh, internals of that new uh, um, runtime works? I don't have to know how to build compilers. I'm just trying to figure out how likely is it, is so so long in the future going to expand to support other other uh, blockchains? So the effort is, is it, um, well, so it's, the effort is very much around um, understanding the, um, the, the, the the target VM and, and, and the interface and not so much the, um, the blockchain or the compiler architecture. Um, it, it does get quite tricky because when things don't work, um, you are working on a, quite a low level in, in WebAssembly or so, and you might end up having to sort of step through some uh, WebAssembly code to understand why it doesn't work. Um, but that's that's very much sort of runtime VM kind of issues, and um, 
the, the compiler side for a new target um, probably isn't a huge uh, huge issue, and that's certainly something we, we can we're always available to help with should that arise. Great, that helps out. Thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to point out that they really did a good job fixing the two big issues that um, were around the last time they, they came up. Uh, they got the three maintainers, and they're also a large number of very viable real-world use cases, along with the interest that we're seeing here. So I think now is, is absolutely the right time to bring this in. Um, and th this doesn't impact the, um, the admission, but I think something that would be useful to see is how they handle standard uh, solidity contracts being fed straight in like all the open Zeppelin would be an interesting test case to figure out where the rough spots are and might also open up a utility for people who'd want to say just run the open Zeppelin fabric to open Zeppelin tokens on fabric or some other chain but that has no bearing on whether or not um, on, on my acceptance of this so that's just point of information you're absolutely right and um, putting open Zeppelin is is, is an off uh, requested feature. Um, um, so Cyril has just opened a an issue for that, and it's it's um, it, it's something which is on our roadmap. All right, thanks, Dana. Uh, any other comments? Uh, any concerns that people might have with bringing Solon in as a top level project, or any other support that anybody wants to state at this point? Um, sorry, I, I definitely want to go through technical details. I'm interested more after understanding this much details, right? Uh, one more question now that Sean is on the call, just from a community support point of view. And some of the other blockchains that are listed over here, are they have their own uh, ecosystem in terms of maintainers and developers, the community, right? So how is the reception from them on this project? Is this being communicated to them as well? Oh, absolutely. There's um, um, so um, Lucas and and I both work for um, Solana, and we're very um, we, we we have get a lot of interest from um, the community um, people, basically for two reasons. People want to take existing contracts, existing solidity contracts, and run them on Solana, or they don't really want to use, learn Rust. Um, some people just feel that um, understanding Rust is, is too much of an ask and um, would rather just keep to solidity. Um, so th there's, there's, a, there's a lot of interest in that community um, and um, in, in Substrate um, as well. Um, um, we are, we are on, on, on various Discord servers and um, um, uh, Telegram groups. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. I can add to it that that uh, there are there is interest on using Solang uh, for for targeting the substrate runtime. Uh, we are aware of parachain teams that want to use it in production, and they they actually plan to do that. All right, Lucas. Uh, I just wanted to compliment what Shen was saying. Uh, on the Solana side, uh, the company promotes some events uh, to to divulge what the network's doing and to make people build on Solana. And we've been part of some of those events, trying to um, encourage people to use Solidity to build the projects. And we we've seen some interest. Uh, and as Shen mentioned, people are trying to used existing contracts on Solana and we are making efforts to help these people uh, build on Solana using Solidity. All right, thanks Lucas. Any other uh, discussion items from the TC or anyone else on the call? 
you know, a small question about the ABI stability plans for the cell line, if it's going to be interoperable with WebAssembly in some way. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed that. Um, the ABI stability, of, sorry, in, in, in what way? Um, in a sense of uh, backwards compatibility, um, is the SO Lang compiler, so to speak, going to be backwards compatible with um, all the smart contracts on the binary uh, level? On, on the binary level, in the, in the sense that um, all the smart contracts compile to the exact same binary representation, or effectively the same binary representation. Well, um, the, the output is, is um, I mean, we, we, we make conscious effort to make sure that the output is deterministic. Uh, we suddenly have box fixes for that. Um, the, um, um, we're not, on, a, on the buyer level, we have to have to be compatible with what, what the language says. That's, that doesn't sort of um, change. Um, Um, the uh, new version, new version of stability, don't really change um, functionality. They just add functionality. They, they wouldn't change the the execution uh, function. Okay, thank you. Dano. So the way that um, the Ethereum Solidity compiler deals with this binary uh, reproducibility problem is a lot of the contracts will lock into a specific version of Solidity. Um, so as long as it's a deterministic compiler and it always produces the same result for each version, I would expect that it would have the same security story as Solidity if you lock into a specific version of Solang and you compile down to that um, specific, uh, you know, always use that specific version to compile it, you always get the same results. That's, that's about as the highest qualities you can get for a repeatable build um, within the EVM ecosystem. So if they can do the same for WASM targets, they'll they'll be in the same uh, position that Ethereum is, which I think is fairly fairly reasonable for, for the constraints. All right, any other questions? I'm not hearing any, uh, anybody speak up against this. Is Artem? So I, I, it's not it's not a question. It's more more about comment. Uh, I see that uh, Solang is mostly uh, focusing on Ethereum based uh, uh, blockchain or EVMs, and uh, we have uh, very few like you know we, we have Bezo, which is a, a Ethereum client, but most of the blockchain projects. I'm I'm just I'm just trying to understand and see how it fits into the uh, current portfolio of the projects that we have in in, in within Hyperledger and uh, without without a roadmap or a kind of a um, uh, vision of how it's integrated into the major projects like uh, Fabric uh, or Softwolf, uh, it's very hard to to, to judge and, and see how we can uh, help to build community around this project being you know being incubated into the Hyperledger. So um, we certainly have 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 had discussions um, in the past about um, using Solang for for um, for other projects. Um, so we've had this conversation with Fabric, uh, with Sword, and with Sawtooth, and with private data objects. Um, so th at the moment, there's no um, the plans were definitely made. Um, work wasn't unfortunately started, um, but that certainly doesn't stop it from from us doing that in the future. Um, we're, we're very interested in adding more targets to um, um, to Solang. The, the more projects work with, with Solang, the, 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 um, the more su the successful the, the project is. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, any other discussion items? Should we move to vote? Uh, I guess that's a, 
uh, yes, if everybody, uh, if there's no other conversation, I think that's where we're at. So Dan, I you make put a motion in? to accept uh, Solang as uh, incubation project at Hyperledger as described in the PR. I'll second that. All right, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Jim. Uh, okay. Rai, did you want to take us through a vote? Of course, I will choose by the order will be who has the longest name in the list. Uh, Troy, in the matter before the TSC, how do you vote? Troy. He's used to being last. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back to Troy. Uh, Artem. I will abstain. Arun. Um, can, can we do this next week? Because I definitely want to read more and come back. Or can I give my opening later through email? Is it okay? Tracy? Uh, well, I mean, we've had the motion in the second. I think we're uh, at the point where we're ready to vote. It's difficult. Um, I, I need some more time. I'll probably abstain, but I'll change my vote. Uh, I may change my vote after reading more, if it's allowed. Okay, two abstains. Dano? Yes. David? Yes. Grace? Yes. Jim? Yes. Kamlesh? Yes. Nathan? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Troy? Well, the, the motion passes anyway, but uh, congratulations. All right. Thanks, Sean, Carol, Lucas. Uh, congratulations on becoming the newest incubator product project within Hyperledger. Fantastic. Now the hard part. What's your new <laughs> name going to be? So, uh, let's see, I'm just trying to figure out who's on the call. Daniela, do we, um, do we want to take this, or David, do we want to take this to the marketing committee? Uh, I know in the proposal, it did say Hyperledger selling, unless uh, somebody at the Hyperledger uh, decided that that was not the, the way that we wanted to go. Um, yeah. So I'm um, Sure. There's a, a naming process that we now jump into. So we will uh, start that process up and reach out to Sean um, and the rest of the maintainers. So, um, and congratulations to the maintainers. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you to um, get Solang as a, a, as a project announced um, over the next few weeks as well. So uh, we will take it from here, Trace. Um, uh, we, I, I actually have a call with the marketing committee chairs next. So um, okay. we'll put it on there and uh, reach out. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, Daniela. Uh, any other discussion items that we should have uh, that weren't on our agenda that we should close out with today? All right. So with that, uh, I guess we'll close the, the call for this week. And we will talk again next week. Again, congratulations to the Solang team for uh, being incubated within Hyperledger. Congratulations. Yep. Bye-bye.